it's on Silent Hill Homecoming. So from the cover, I partially thought that this might be about Alex leaving his hot nurse girlfriend because she had a really bad period going, but instead it kind of explored that wanting to go home thing, you know, you can't go home, it's not the same place anymore. That was kind of interesting. So, the plot, as I understand it, again, thanks to Kermit Head, basically, there used to be an order, but the order that we see, you know, the cult that we see in the game is an offshoot that was started by Judge Holloway, and they're not completely following what the religion said. They they have been sacrificing their children, you know, every 50 years, and basically Alex was supposed to drown, and instead Joshua drowned. At first I really thought that he just, you know, broke his neck, just, that he broke his neck on the boat and was wondering, well, couldn't this just have happened in their room? Why did they need to be out on the water for that? But anyway, and Alex was the one who was supposed to die, and it was indeed by drowning, so they figured that this was really going to screw up the thing with, you know, the religion, and Pyramid Head would show up and kill them, or at least, you know, they would be killed, they would be hurt, something bad would happen, and basically there wasn't any real god in this one like there was in some of the others, I'm not going to spoil which ones. It was really just that they were convinced that it was going to happen. There's a hint near the end of the game where it says, you know, oh, it just came from the minds of the fanatics. And that's essentially what happened here. They all thought that something bad was going to happen, so it kind of did, you know. Like in the second game, the resident magic of Silent Hill brought to life the fears. And that's also why we see the founders, the families, be killed by monsters. You know, we see Fitch killed by the giant porcelain doll. Did anybody else think that he was going to turn into something? I mean, it looked like something was going to be coming out of him, but then he just bled and bled and bled. And then the porcelain doll comes up out of the water. I did kind of like how the porcelain of it turned out to be like armor. That was kind of cool. Anyway, Doc Fitch, the mayor, is slammed by that first boss, you know, where afterwards Alex faints so much for the whole tough guy, military dude thing. I don't know, maybe it's a hint that he wasn't really a soldier, you know, he's just been in the mental hospital. And he, you know, I get that he was fainting, but personally, I would think that I would really try hard to aim away from the giant bottomless pit. If, yeah. Anyway. And... Uh, I guess that's more or less it. Well, Adam, the father, you know, John Locke, was taken out by Pyramid Head who we only really see the two times. I thought that was kind of cool, you know, very, very little of him, and it's kind of like he is the punisher of, you know, those who have done ill, as far as the religion goes. And jo you know, Alex didn't know he was doing anything, he didn't know about the religion back then, but Adam did, and he did not live up to the whole sacrificing thing, so he was being punished there. I don't entirely think that 
I don't know, if it was just a mental hospital, I mean, I was thinking that maybe the whole thing was in his head, basically, but that's not entirely accurate either, so... I don't know, I think they should have gone for one or the other, you know. Anyway. Isn't it interesting how in these games they so often do not talk about all the monsters, you know. When you first meet L, there's a dead dog, clearly not, I'm not going to say human, but not a regular dog, not even an interesting crossbreed, it's like 20 steps away from them, and neither of them bring it up. Like, by the way, with all these missing people, I don't want to bring too much bad to your attention, but have you noticed that thing over there, that, you know, the, the car ran into it and it's laying there dead, it's clearly not a normal dog. Just wanted to bring it to your attention. I did like that Wheeler at least mentioned it. Wheeler can really take a beating, or three. How much does he survive? I mean, at first, wasn't he crushed there in the police station? Or did he just, I don't know, was he behind the rubble, I guess? Then there's the, you know, he disappears not long after that, but oh, wait, he's still alive. Then he gets sucked into, I don't know, the orifice? by that, you know, human centipede thing. Try to get that image out of your head if you watch the cinema snob anyway. And then he gets stabbed half a dozen times. I gave him a, a med kit because I figured, why not? He survived thus far, why couldn't he survive this? It was actually probably the least going to kill him thing that happened to him in the entire game. I like that it let you stew for a couple of seconds, at least, you know, there in the cell. You know, you're going around thinking, okay, how am I going to get out of here? You're trying to think, okay, could he open the lock somehow? And he's like, ah, oh, I'm going to need some tools. And you're thinking, oh, crap, where am I going to get some tools? You know, and then the light comes on, and it's Deputy Wheeler. I kind of like that enemy with, like, I, th I think Siam is what the loading screen hints call him. It, yeah, it fits. A male and a female side, you know, the front with those giant, I guess, like, elephant legs, kind of, did remind me of that one from, I think, the third game, yeah. But okay. And it's got, like, you know, female legs sticking out of the back, and you have to get around to the back and stab it in the female side. That was kind of cool. And the, the one with the giant hammerhead shark kind of head that's sharp, that was also pretty cool. Seriously, the first time one of those opened the door and followed me into another room, or and then hopped over, you know, I smashed the glass, hopped in to get the health thing, and then it hopped after me. You know, that was really <laughs> creepy. Also about Wheeler, I quite like the Order Soldiers strategy with him. Basically just grab him from behind and punch him awkwardly in the side. Yeah, that'll work. I kind of like what they did with the radio in this. Basically it doesn't go off unless you can't see the enemy that is near you. You know, instead of... I think it would have been too much if it went off every time there was an enemy in the vicinity, even if you did know they were there, especially with how much energy you spend just trying to run away from them, that was really intense because most of them can really hunt you, you know. The dogs, you can just barely run away from at all because they're so frickin' fast. You know, most of the enemies... Smog is really the only one that can't follow you for a long stretch of time, and if you have to run past him, yeah, again, you're in trouble. 
that's going to be a challenge, you know. So near the end, seriously, he takes a drill to the thigh, and he's not even limping afterwards. I did kind of like that you, you know, you struggle to get out of it, and then you grab, you know, and push the drill into her throat. I kind of would have liked for him to say that to Elle, you know, she's like, my mother, and he's like, I'm sorry, or something like that, you know, I think he should have, you know, it should have been, my mother, I had to push a drill into her throat. She's bleeding out back there. She died and she was in a lot of pain. Elle must know that her mother is, you know, crazy cultist at that point, right? I kind of like the smirk that you just kind of, you know, as she's running out of the gas chamber leaving you there and Wheeler, you know, it's just brief enough that you you, you notice it and it's like, Hey, you know, that that was nice. And also that you could sort of sense the Order soldiers behind Alex and Mom when they come to pick her up, you know. How did they get out of there? Didn't they get locked in? It was like the door locked and you don't see them again. I mean, I didn't fight any Order soldiers in the house. I like the sort of Hellraiser thing this had going on, you know, with chains and outstretched flesh. I think it was more than in the other games, or maybe it just hit me more. The graphics had a real dynamic quality to them, like, you know, you saw the veins across the ground, and it really seemed like there was some pulsating going on, you know. There was a real sense of motion and life, if not necessarily the way we know it you know, too much of what we saw in the game. Many of the creepy sites. About creepy, the doll that, you know, with Doc Fitch, it was creepy, but it could have been creepier, you know. It especially, I mean, when it starts talking to him, you know, right there in their hands, that should have been like a total, you know, jaw-dropping moment. It worked, but it really wasn't as powerful to me as it seemed like it should have been. You know, when you're trying to talk him out of it, and you know, you say, you know, oh, I can heal the wounds, and he's like, no, these wounds, they cannot heal. Oh my god, he's gonna start singing Evanescence. And then, you know, he's up in the creepy doll's hand, and he's like, forgive me, and it bites his head off. I think that's a no, dude. I also don't know how it swallowed his head, because it didn't seem to have much of a throat. Maybe that's why they cut away. So, the... the Curtis, near the end, how had he not killed El? I mean, I'm glad she survived and all, but how had he not killed her in all that time? You know, he leaves before you get attacked by the drill. I'd say at least a good five minutes pass. Was he just all that time going on about how horny it made him to be holding that circular saw? Near the end you find a propaganda note. I quite, from the order, I quite like the ending of it. Coffee and donuts served. You know, because if you're going to convert people, you're gonna want to serve, you know, some kind of pastry. With anyone else just slightly annoyed at, you know, you find the switch is, oh, I can control all the gates from here. Oh, it's broken. And then he walks off, you know, five minutes later you come back with Deputy Wheeler and it's like, and he just fixes it just like that, you know. He doesn't mention doing anything else. I mean, that prison wasn't even Shepherd's Glen prison. It was, you know, in Silent Hill, you know, so how... There really wasn't a lot of Silent Hill in this game, considering that the title is Silent Hill and Homecoming. But, you know, it was maybe, I don't know, half the game spent in Silent Hill all in all. You know, you were there early on, and then you wake up in Shepherd's Glen again. And, you know, near the end, 
you go there in search of your father, who for some reason left the map behind in spite of the fact that he was going to Silent Hill. I don't know, does he just know it like the back of his hand by now? There's kind of a dumbbell, isn't he? Literally, after he tells you to disable the power, you disable the power, he's like, The lights went out! What happened? Did you disable the power? Y yeah. Yeah. When Alex is, like, confronting his catatonic mother, and, you know, I know about Silent Hill, she replies, You don't know anything about Silent Hill! Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. He really doesn't. He literally just read just a little bit about it now. You know, he doesn't know, we don't know what's going on at that point, you know. And I think that's basically what I had to say about the game. So, those are my thoughts on Silent Hill Homecoming. Hope you enjoyed them. I'll see you next time.